Hello and welcome back to Monsters, Myths, and Mayhem. I'm Silver and Nomadic. It's chaotic, but today it's nomadic. Nomadic. I'm a gnome with chaos. Today's episode's gonna be covering gnomes. Well, Gasp! <laughs> Who knew? Not me, just suddenly springing this on you. <laughs> What all do you know about gnomes? Absolutely nothing besides they go in a garden. It is one variety of gnomes. There's multiple varieties? Yes. You can choose your gnome? Yes. Garden gnomes are one of the more common ones. Ooh, but okay. There is also forest gnomes. They live in forests and they are the most, actually they say they're the most common type. Mm. Uh, they help animals, especially when they're injured by hunting traps. They're Siberian gnomes. They are fancy. They're the tallest of the gnomes. They live in cold areas, and they're always in a bad mood. They wear dark clothing. That's my kind of gnome. Some say they interbreed with trolls. Never mind. That's not my kind of gnome. <laughs> this is jungle gnomes. They're the shortest, mm -hmm. and they live in tropical, tropical areas. They're vibing. Desert gnomes. They live in the dunes and wear light colored co uh, uh, words. <laughs> they wear light colored clothing. Right, camouflage. I imagine sand. Just, just run around in camouflage. Uh, there's farm gnomes. They oh my are god. They're similar to forest gnomes, uh, but they live on farms along with humans and help animals that are, have a pleasant day. Oh, words! It's, it's one of those days. <laughs> <laughs> they live on farms along with humans and help animals have a pleasant life. Do you have gnomes on the farm? We don't have animals. Wow. You got cats? Yeah, maybe. Gnomes yeah, and gnomes? cats don't get along. Oh, fancy. Okay, we're getting into stuff. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah gnomes and cats don't get along, and gnomes and trolls don't get along. Besides the Siberian gnomes, apparently, sometimes. Then there is garden gnomes. They are very popular, and they help your plants and grow healthy. Uh, there's home gnomes, or house gnomes, which... They live in your house with preferences for big houses, especially if they have basements. And they help, mm. they help the humans fix broken things. And some things with gnomes for that they all kind of do is they can go in hidden places. So they kind of, they can move between hidden areas without going into the open. It's a little bit, the gnome common tree. Okay. Shadow walkers. Shadow walkers. It's probably a whole different monster, but I'm just going to call them that this time. <laughs> gnomes were, they were first kind of brought about or talked about in the 16th century by a Swiss alchemist called Ooh. Paracelsus. Paracelsus was a 16th century Swiss alchemist. He identified gnomes as a class of nature spirit comprising of earth elements in contrast to air, water, and fire elementals, the class of gnomes has been considered to include satyrs, pans, dryads, elves, brownies, and goblins. So he's talking all those guys are all gnomes mm -hmm. or earth elementals. Some helping plants and animals, some helping humans, some reclusive ones staying underground or in the dark forest. Perhaps hoarding treasure and other interacting mischievously or even harmful with humans. I don't think I've ever considered them harmful. They are very... They can be. Like mischievous harmful or like harmful? More mischievous harmful. Okay. Where they steal all your food. Because you never want to disrespect the gnome. Because they will... Like they'll reset your hunting trap right after you just unset it make you fall into it or they'll make your crops just wilt and die break things around the house but that's only if you disrespect them and one big way to disrespect them is if you don't leave 
porridge with butter on top out for them at Christmas time. Hmm. So you have all those other types of gnomes, but the gnomes also have specializations. Some can manipulate earth, some like crafting, burrowing, alchemy, escape artistry, gadget usage, illusion awareness, illusion manipulation, mechanical intuition, night vision, potion creation, semi-immortality, subterranean adaption, technology manipulation, and technomancy. I'm not sure if they're just listing the abilities of gnomes or just what gnomes are really good at. Mm, I don't know, because gnomes could probably do a lot. Gnomes have a lot of different names in other countries as well. We're not just called gnomes. In Denmark and Norway, they are Nis. In Swedish, they're Nissen, or sometimes Tanti. Britain call them Nains. Polish call them Nam. Bulgaria and Albany use Duji. Hungary... Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia, gnomes are Mano, Mano, Dutch is Kabuto, Kabuto, Belgian, Switzerland, Luxembourg, use Klein Manekin, Klein Manekin, Klein Manekin, is my best way to try and pronounce that. And German, call them Er, Erdmanlein? Bird man lanes. Leans. Something or the other. Yeah. I'm not good at ling other languages. I probably shouldn't have tried, but. Except in Alpines, where they are called Heinzelmachen. Heinzelmachen. I should give this list to you for you to read out. I'll do that next time. What do you think gnomes look like? I have you ever seen Romeo and Juliet? Yes, I have. That's what I picture. picture and then, like, all... go ahead. You picture them all wearing like super tall, thin speedos. Yeah, hundred and ten percent. That's it, right there. Perfection. And I like the way that their hats mean something by the height. I don't remember what they meant by height in that movie. If they're blessing, maybe. Maybe originally. They were conceived ugly, ground-dwelling creatures that were less humanoid than gnomes are today. They were they looked more like uh, goblins. From when you think of goblins, they more look like those or disfigured fairies, and they did not wear their pointed hat back then. Some did, like red caps. Red caps were very angry creatures, from what I remember. Most depictions of gnomes are them wearing their classic uh, suspenders and they got their long white beards and pointed hats. Uh, usually you can identify a gnome by its clan based on the outfit that it's wearing. Just like Nomi and Juliet, they had certain colors that reds and blues. Gnomes would have different clothing to match their clan. Hmm. And the average height is actually probably taller than most garden gnomes. They're statues, not the garden gnomes, garden gnomes. Because they, they can reach between eight and 18 inches and three feet is the common uh, height that I keep finding. Not too bad. But they also have some kind of supernatural powers. Like, they are seven times stronger than a human. What? What? It's like seven of you all in one. Oh my god. That'd be like 14 of me. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, they can run at top speed of 35 miles per hour. Imagine how fast your legs would have to be traveling. 18 inches tall. You don't 35. even see them. <laughs> It's like a whole Sonic. They're just, it's like a blur. Maybe Sonic was a gnome, not a hedgehog. They have better eyesight than a hawk. That's crazy. And uh, gnomes, their life... What do you think a lifespan of a gnome is? Like 100 years. Okay, quadruple that. Oh my god. 
they say they live up to the 400 years. And once women are around 120 years old, they will start giving, they can have children. Or they could have children before that, I'd imagine. But when they're 120, they only give birth to twins. Wow. That's commitment. That's to remain, or that's to uh, make sure their population remains stable. Which I'm not really sure if I understand that point. Why do twins make populations stable? Mm. They have telepathy. They can talk between each other with telepathy. They can make plants grow. By grafting them, make them bud. They're they're vegetarians. That makes sense. But they sometimes like milk, eggs, butter. That you would be vegan if you didn't like that stuff. Vegetarians still eat that stuff. The eggs, maybe not so much, but the milk and butter, yeah. There is a flower that invites gnomes to protect you. So if you want some gnomes come into your house for some protection, you know. Maybe to scare off those trolls that you have. All the trolls? I'm going to try to pronounce this. It's Galbanum. Galbanum. Or per, Pervula Galbaniflura. I know Mondi watches, listens to this. So his wife is a florist person. A florist person? Yes. She, will, she listens to. Actually, you're, she's a floral designer so it's close there you go there you go galbanum that's close imagine Gal galbanum i would imagine that's how i would say it i don't know carry help <laughs> <laughs> kind of mentioned earlier when gnomes can travel through the earth they can like mend into the meld into the stones and earth and just kind of travel through it probably being there why they're earth spirits and uh mm. if sunlight touches them they turn to stone, just like trolls. Mm. That's why we have so many gnome garden statues. They're actually just gnomes that got caught out in the sunlight. I just remember, Mondi's afraid of gnomes, so he might not listen. Okay, so there's a connection between Santa Claus and gnomes that I keep seeing, but I couldn't really find a good depiction of besides this. Just a really quick, brief paragraph. It was that the Swedish word for both house gnomes and Christmas Santa Claus is the same word. It's Tomti. At the beginning of the last century, the beloved Swedish artist Jenny Nistrom started painting the Christmas Tomti in the Father Christmas. He knocks on the door and brings a sack full of presents to all the good children on Christmas Eve as a small gnome. Ever since the Swedish Santa Claus has looked like a house gnome. Some people think Santa's elves are actually gnomes. That'd be crazy. Well, the 16th century, they uh, depicted elves and gnomes as the same earth spirit category. It's not really uh, unheard of. I don't think it'd be too crazy. Maybe. That's it for my notes on the gnomes. If anybody has anything more, they're free to write in. Email or Discord or Twitter or Chaotix chat. Just spam gnome. It's a word in Chaotix chat user. Rip. Not the gnome trolls. Imagine being a gnome and a troll. It's just a Siberian gnome. <laughs> Any uh, thoughts on gnomes? There was a lot I was surprised about. I guess I thought like I knew gnomes because I knew garden gnomes and here there's a whole other plethora of gnomes, which I'm sure some viewers and listeners may be able to relate to. But overall, it's pretty, it's just neat. It's just neat to hear it all and see and like understand that there's so many different kinds and they live in different areas. Like I would have never placed a gnome in the desert. It's just pretty nifty. And I like that they each adapt to each of their areas. Um, I like that they have like all the different, like they can help with plants, animals. Um, I thought it was neat that they don't get along with cats. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Um, just stuff like that. It's just different. They're a very worldwide species. Uh, I see that. Besides, they're, so are cats. So I'm not really what? sure how that, but cats are worldwide. True. Media. 
media has lots of gnomes in them. I just always immediately think of garden gnomes. That's, I mean, that's just, you know, the garden gnomes depict all the different kinds of gnomes. Like it was cute, blah, blah, blah. And here there's gnomes. <laughs> yeah, there's, I think I read that the garden gnomes started in Germany in the 16th century. Then the Swede, Swedish adapted and started making their own garden gnomes, which is the garden gnomes that we are know of today. We're still known as the design for those of the Swedish garden gnomes. And, but there's been more than that. There's been gnomes. There's been a whole gnome television show. I think it was mm -hmm. Ran Randolph the gnome or interesting. I think it was back in the eighties or nineties. Uh, David the Gnome. David the Gnome was the TV show. He, I didn't actually watch it. It was from 1985 to 1987, before I was even born. Wow. But then Dis Disney also did their own gnome show, gnome movie, back in the 60s. I think it's the Gnome Wagon. Okay. Which is on YouTube. I watched a little bit about a little bit of it. No mobile. That's it. By Walt Disney back in 1967. Mm. But it had the classic pointed hat gnomes. This is, it wasn't even an animated show like David the Gnome. This was just people dressed up as gnomes and fairies and actually looks interesting. I kind of want to watch it. It's different than what I think Disney does today. We should have a movie night in the Discord. Yeah. I'll watch no mobile, but in video games, gnomes are pretty much in every MMO RPG. It seems like because World of Warcraft, you can play as a gnome. D and D, you can play as a gnome. Final Fantasy, I believe you can play as a gnome race. Is there a gnome? Those aren't gnomes, are they? I don't think there was gnomes, but I could be wrong. The really short race in D in a uh, Final Fantasy Mogens? No, Lalafels. The Lalafels are what I'm thinking of. I was, I was thinking they were gnomes. Maybe they're based off gnomes. Maybe. We can move on to the mayhem, which I see is happening over there. <laughs> I feel like they'd be more helpful. Like, I know that there is some malicious and, like, mischievous intent, but I feel like they'd be mostly helpful. They would definitely be more helpful than harmful, unless you disrespect them, which is... Right. But... I think this is the nicest creature we've discussed. I agree. That with the very tame, less potential for harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think they'd be pretty chill. I think mischievous wise, they'd maybe be maybe two fires, maybe two, maybe three, maybe. And that's just because if you piss them off, they could really do some damage. But yeah, but if you let's go to the extreme, you may you piss off every single gnome on the planet. Oh, you're dead. They control the earth. They could probably pretty much just wipe out anything green. Just kill it all. Just long enough for the human population to dwindle. And to bring it back. True. That'd be some wide scale destruction. For sure. Like here. Or well, on the other hand. If we can capture gnomes. And send them to the moon. Do you think we can have gnomes grow trees on the moon? I feel like technologically they would be a little bit more stumped, but I feel like if we were to send anybody up there to plant stuff and get it to bet to life, I feel like, you know, probably, probably gnomes. Could they survive in the vacuum of space? I mean, do they, they need air like we do? They can go through Earth and they could just live there. So maybe. So maybe they can do that on the moon. Yeah, just live under the surface. I mean, maybe. You're, I don't know if you follow much science news, but uh, some agricultural scientists have recently got their hands on moon dirt from the last moon mission where we got dirt from. And they have successfully uh, planted and grew crops in moon dirt. Mm -hmm. But the plants are all wilty and still had oxygen from us, not really in a vacuum. So it's right. kind of. They proved that soil is still kind of healthy. Or it's not healthy, it's bad for the plants because too much iron. But it grew. Yeah. Vote gnomes for the moon for colonization. 
of the Fae. I'm sure there's probably some other Fae living on the moon. I mean, Selene's there. <laughs> or she is the moon. I wonder if we don't see gnomes as much now. Is because we have so many cats around. Wild cat population has skyrocketed. Maybe we have so many wild cats because the gnomes are dwindling. They kept the cat population in check. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like they're pretty versatile. I think they're, I think they're more versatile than we even could begin to understand. Thank you all for listening and shout out time now for our two patrons still, which is Mondi and Thor. They still haven't told me if they want to be called anything else, so I'm just calling them by their D D character names. Baller. Mondi and Thor, the real OGs. Let's go. Yeah. You can find our patron link down below in the description. I'm not sure if you can search it or not. I haven't tried, but yeah, if you would just click yeah, the links. Links. Link. We got direct the, links. There's direct links to a bunch of stuff down below. Oh. Okay. Links to our patron, links to our Discord, our chaotic stream, uh. <laughs> Twitter, Twitterverse. Yeah, all sorts of ways to contact us. And if you would, please leave a review. It does help. Join us again next Monday on Monsters, Miss, and Mayhem, found on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Anchor.fm. Silver and Chaotic talk about how monsters and myths came to be and how they would be received in modern day society. Follow, like, and subscribe to support. Also find the podcast on Twitter and Discord with the links below to keep up to date with the newest merch and activity. Besides, who knows what mayhem we will get into next.